What is up everyone? We are back with another case review and this time things are about to get small, portable, and height. What are we talking about? The Height Revolt 3, of course. Let's get going right here, right now on Robitech. Lexar has been around the storage game for 25 years now when it comes to things like memory cards, readers, and solid state drives. But now, Lexar is getting into RAM with their first lineup called Hades. Their 32 gigabyte kit comes with two 16 gigabyte DIMMs running at 3600 megahertz, which is a pretty competitive space in the DDR4 market. So if you're looking for a solid set of RAM for your next build, go ahead and check out the new Lexar Hades RGB RAM, link in the description below. When you talk about mini ITX cases, you've got some major players in the game space, such as the SSUP Meshlicious, Cooler Master with their NR200P and NR200P Max cases, Fantex and the Evolve Shift, Inwin in the A1, and NZXT with the H1. Those are just to name a few, and yes, I know there's some big ones I missed. Well, what if I told you that iBuyPower made an ITX case? Roby, do you mean iBuyPower, the same company that makes pre-built PCs and I can buy it like Newegg or Best Buy? Yep, that's exactly who I mean, iBuyPower, who has actually been in the mini ITX case game for quite a while now. In 2013, iBuyPower came out with the Revolt line, which was one of the first to use the PCI riser cabled layout. And they expanded in 2016 and released the Revolt 2 that allowed full-size ATX PSUs, full-size GPUs, and dual radiator AIO support. But Roby, it's 2021 and the industry has gone through quite a bit. GPUs have gotten bigger, PSUs have gotten bigger and smaller, CPUs and GPUs consume more power, so wouldn't I need to buy at least a micro ATX case or above to house all of this? Nope, with the cases I mentioned above, iBuyPower has come back into the game and launched the Revolt 3 under their new hype brand to show its commitment to the DIY market. Now let's look to see if this is a true statement, can it actually hold all of that cool stuff, by going over the actual specs of the case. First, let's talk about the buying options and what the case actually costs. You have four options for the Height Revolt 3. You have the typical black or white option that retails for $129.99, or you can pick up one that already has a 700 watt SFXL 80 plus gold PSU installed in the case for $249.99. From the outside of the Height Revolt 3, we see the entire case is made of aluminum, steel, and ABS plastic. Typical parts used to make cases these days. And it also has mesh on the front, the back, and both sides, oh, and also the top. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait, what is that that's on the top? Oh, it's a pop-out handle for you to easily carry the case around, and it's a pretty sturdy handle too. And I might add that it supports up to 30 pounds max, which is heavy. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa there's more. There's even a pop-out bar on the side that will let you hold a headset. Oh, and it's on both sides. Okay, Height, you have my attention. The dimensions for the Height Revolt 3 are 253 by 178 by 409 millimeters, or that's 9.9 .9 inches by 7 inches wide by 16.1 inches high, and weighs about 14 pounds with power supply installed. Now let's look inside of this case to see what kind of components we can slap in there if we wanted to destroy people at LAN parties. But before I go too far, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about the front I.O. panel, which is located at the bottom of the front of the case. It comes with one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port on the left, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, your power button, and then another USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port to the right of the power button. And finally, it also has a 3.5 millimeter audio slash mic combo jack in that order. It's a stylish looking I.O. panel, so I need to give height some kudos on the placement and the layout. And it's easy to access, which is always good. Now, as we dive into the inside of the case, we see that the Height Revolt 3 can be disassembled completely, as in all of the panels are actually magnetic and can be removed for easy access to begin building your PC. There is even a radiator door that swings open for easy access. Again, height, you have my attention. Now, the most obvious thing that can fit in here is your mini ITX motherboard. I mean, this is a mini ITX case review, so we are gonna tell you that a MSI B550 Tomahawk will fit because it won't. 
but you can fit motherboards such as the MSI B550i Gaming Edge Wi-Fi or the Asus ROG Strix Z590i Gaming. For radiator support in the Height Revolt 3, you have options such as 120mm, 240mm, 140mm, or up to 280mm with a max thickness of 35mm, so AIOs such as the NZX Kraken X63 will fit. It is also important to note that the unique nature of installing the AIO and how you need to almost wrap the hoses to ensure it fits properly. So avoiding the EVGA line of coolers would be wise given the lack of articulation. And it would also be good to avoid the EKWB line because bending the hoses can cause potential leakage. NZXT and Corsair are some of your best options given the type of tubes and also the ability to manipulate the tubes as you install the AIO into the case. And don't forget to utilize that swinging radiator door, mind you. But Roby, what if I don't want to have an AIO? What if I want to air cool my CPU? What options do I have? Don't air cool in here, by the way. But if you wanted to, then any air cooler up to 140 millimeters will fit inside of this case. So your best bet is to find a good low profile cooler, such as the Noctua NH-L9i or A, but most tower style coolers are around 159 millimeters, which means they aren't gonna fit. You can even put an 80 millimeter fan up top as exhaust for extra airflow support. Will you need to? Probably, as cooling is a struggle in this case, but alas, I'm spoiling it a little. However, remember this. The more fans you add, the more cables you have to manage. And inside any mini ITX case, that is not so cut and dry. Now on to the multi-million dollar question. What GPU can you fit inside of this case? The max dimension of the GPU you can put in the case is, and I quote from the website, most cards up to 335 millimeters by 148 millimeters by 58 millimeters. Height made it easy on their website. There's a tab for compatible GPUs and incompatible GPUs. Some GPUs that won't fit are like your thick boy Gigabyte Aorus Master 3080 Ti's and 3070 Ti's and your MSI Supreme X 3080's and 3090's. Make sure you check the link on the website should you get a GPU through like Newegg Shuffle, black market or wherever you get it to make sure that it actually fits as a compatible GPU. You need to use either an SFX or SFX power supply as those are the only ones that are gonna fit inside of this case. Your storage options in the Height Revolt 3 are decent too. You have two two and a half inch bays for your SSDs and one three and a half inch bay for an HDD. Again, remember to be mindful of your cable management here as you might be better off just buying a mini ITX board with two NVMe slots on it instead. And there you have it, all of the goodness that the Height Revolt 3 Mini ITX case has to offer and what you can put inside. In fact, let's put some of these parts inside it right now and see how it performs. For our motherboard, we're gonna be using the Z590 All Ultra. We're gonna use an i5-11600K. We're gonna be using Intel 670Ps. We're using uh, Crucial Ballistics. This is DDR3600 at CL16. And this is the uh, Fractal Celsius S24 Dynamic. And then finally, we're gonna be using the EVGA RTX 3060 Ti for the win. Okay, so let's uh, let's go and start getting our PC built and uh, let's start getting some stuff inside this case. What do you guys say? Uh, oh, look at that. That's a pretty mobo. Wow, look at that. That's fancy. Oh no, the thing came off. I'd worked on that. Ugh. The best thing about this, check this out. Boom, look at that. Look at this, for hanging accessories. Just kind of pops apart very easily. Oh, look at that. I was legit not expecting that. Look at that, it's like a door. Knock, knock, who's there? It's gonna have to go across the front. You're not gonna have, be able to have like a clean line here for this. So you are gonna have to worry about this, about the CPU, the, the CPU cable. Okay, here we go, let's get our AIO installed. GPU time, guys. There it is. There we go. And there it is, just sits in just like that. This is it, like it's, it's ready to go. This is holding down this cable. Everything looks nice and clean. There it is, hey, that lights up, RGB.
So building in the height Revolt 3 is actually a lot of fun. And given the lack of a PCIe riser cable, it also takes out one of the biggest heartaches of mini ITX builds right now, and that's having to get a hold of a quality PCIe Gen 4 riser cable or having to bench your build and set your BIOS so you can use a Gen 3 riser cable instead. This is a larger mini ITX case, so even though cable management is still a challenge, the additional room does help. Now, the cables that come with the pre-installed 700 watt PSU, if that's an option you chose, are just a tad bit short. And I spoke about this a little bit during the stream when I was trying to get my EPS CPU cable installed and having to run it right across the whole top of the motherboard. Now let's talk a little bit about fit because there are some things that you may want to consider. Nay, may I say, you do need to consider if you're gonna build in this case. And they are going to alleviate quite a bit of pain. The first thing that is going to save you some pain in this case is potentially getting one of those Team ProfitCon USB 3.0 internal extension kits. On many motherboards, the USB 3 header is right under where you're going to have a giant mass of cables, making it a little bit of a struggle and potentially causing some undue pressure on that USB 3 cable. Second, use low profile RAM. Like the USB 3, your RAM is going to be sitting right up against that large block of cables, and the higher it is, the more likely it's going to either interfere just flat out with cable management, or have a ton of pressure pushed up against the RAM because your cables are pushing on the dims. Lastly, and I alluded this a little bit earlier when we we're talking about AIO fits, you do need to be particular about the AIO you're going to be putting into the build. Unlike the NZXT H1, which has a custom built AIO to specifically fit the case, the Revolt 3 has you doing what feels like unnatural things to help get your AIO installed. The more articulation you have in the tubes, the better things are going to be in compressing those tubes a lot when you're closing the case. So the build experience is okay. And to be honest, in a lot of ways, a lot of fun. But there's a lot of things to consider that take that experience down a little bit. But what about thermals, you might ask? Well, let's dig into that, shall we? So thermals for the Height Revolt 3 using an Intel 11th Gen 11600K and an EVGA RTX 3060 Ti FTW3 were as follows. So for CPU temps, yeah, CPU temps. Here's the deal, guys. The reason this review ended up taking so long is because and if you paid any attention to our build portion, that we were originally using the Fractal Design Celsius S24 Plus, which is a good cooler, mind you. But this case, not sure why, but this case just does not have optimal cooling performance. I mean, it could be the dust filters or just how the air just isn't flowing through the case, but initially our 11600K, which let's be honest, isn't a crazy CPU, was thermal throttling like mad with the S24 Plus. So we went up to the Fantex Glacier 1 280MP to see if things got better. And they did get better, but that's somewhat relative. And what I learned is that my dreams of building the ultimate portable gaming machine inside of this case, which I really, really wanted to do, have now been kind of dashed. At idle, sitting in both open and closed case, we saw it sitting at a nice and cool 30 degrees. But when we turn it up and crank all the power using A to 64, we see things jump to a nice and toasty 90 degrees in both the closed and open case scenario. Say what? How is it 90 degrees in the open case? Well, to be honest, we believe it may be because of how the whole system is packed together, that regardless of how much air is getting to the fans, there is a lot of heat trapped on the other side that is counteracting the effect of the cooling. So with the really hot side and the somewhat cooler side, it's basically balancing out. And only by getting the radiator in its largest size at 280 millimeters, do you actually keep the warm side from winning and helping shoot those temperatures way up. Now having a 90 degree system under load isn't actually gonna do any harm or anything. And to be honest, if you're gaming on this thing, you're not gonna be getting anywhere near that warm. But what it does tell me is that there is going to be a cap on what kind of CPU you can put inside this case. And anything higher than a 5600X or maybe, maybe an 11700K is really going to struggle. Well, what about GPU, Roby? Was that much better? Well, GPU temperatures when sitting at idle were okay at 39 degrees in the open case scenario and a much warmer 54 in the closed case. Now, when we crank it up and start running all of our GPU stress tests, we see it hit 70 degrees in the open case scenarios and again, a much warmer 81 in the closed case. These are manageable and you definitely want a card in this case that has a good cooling. So like your XC3 or FTW3 EVGA cards, depending on which model, or Strix cards are going to be good options versus lower end 3000 or 2000 series cards, which just have adequate cooling. Okay, so now all of that being said, there was one thing that we did not test. 
And I think we just missed it as an option was adding an 80 millimeter fan to the top to give you some additional cooling. My suggestion is that this case could get all of the help it can. So adding a fan could potentially alleviate some of those warmer temperatures. Now you should be monitoring your temperatures regularly in this case, as anything like cat hair or dust could potentially impact or reduce your cooling effectiveness and eventually lead to thermal throttling slash performance issues. Okay, so there are your thermals and it's kind of a mixed bag. But like always, we wanna cover how the build we actually put inside of the system was going to perform if you decided you wanted to build a similar system inside of this case as well. So first up, it's our single player NVIDIA RTX experiences for this EVGA 3060 Ti FTW3 paired with an Intel 11th Gen 11 600K. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p with DLSS set on the highest preset, we saw an average frame rate of 117 FPS across the runs that we did in the game. For Metro Exodus, also running at 1440p with ray tracing on high and DLSS set to balance, we saw an average FPS of 53.19, about 13 frames higher than a 3060 paired with the same CPU. And just like the 3060, if we wanna see that number at 60 FPS, you either wanna turn down settings or have your overall resolution drop down to 1080p. Let's talk about Dirt 5 running at 1440p with ultra graphic settings. We saw an average frame rate of 84.7, which is solid for racing, so no adjustment needed here. Lastly, in rounding out the single player experiences was Borderlands 3, running at the highest graphical preset, we saw an FPS average of 67.4, which unlike the 3060 pairing, is hitting north of 60 consistently and good enough for some single player action. But if you are gonna wanna get north of 100 frames per second, then you're going to need to adjust settings or slip down to 1080p. So what about MP games? Well, for Apex Legends running on low visual settings at 1440p, optimizing for competitive gameplay and high frame rate, we saw an average FPS of 214.7 across our multiple game sessions. For Call of Duty Warzone, again, low visual settings at 1440p, optimizing for competitive FPS gameplay and maximizing for frame rate, we saw an average frame rate of 170.1. Now finally, for Fortnite, again, 1440p, totally all about frames, we saw it hitting at a very nice and fluid 349.2 FPS, which is great. So nowhere near as much of a mixed bag at 1440p like we saw in our RTX 3060, and there are a lot of games, depending on your threshold, that are more than capable of being played at 1440p using this combination of CPU and GPU. So, Roby, let's wrap it up. What are my final thoughts? There is so much I like about this case. And the folks at Height have really worked hard on trying to make something that works well as a portable PC that is great for taking to LAN parties or even more recently, Bitwit hotel rooms. I mean, it ticks all of the boxes on form. Unfortunately, the thermals keep this from achieving greatness, and I see some serious thermal redesign work needed to help allow builders to put whatever parts they want inside of this case. Another option that Height could pursue is to follow the same route that Cooler Master and NZXT did and work on creating custom AIO one-off cooling solutions that alleviate the primary cooling concern that is keeping this from allowing people to build that ultimate portable gaming rig. That's not to say that you should avoid this case. If you wanna build a great LAN party rig or portable rig, then you just need to pay attention to cooling and temper the hardware you put inside the build to ensure you aren't causing problems for yourself with thermal throttling and performance. It just takes some planning. And this machine is more than capable of handling a nice 1440 piece that can have you slaying fools at high frame rates on the go. You just need to be smart about planning your build and keeping these little limitations in mind when you're building your Height Revolt 3 system. But what did you think? What's your favorite part about the Height Revolt 3? Were you considering this case? Do you even go to land parties? I would love to know all of that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robitech. Also, make sure you check out our amazing community over at Discord with thousands of people who love to hang out talking about tech, PC builds, all of the things that you probably love as well. If you're trying to find the best deals, make sure you check out robitechdeals.com. We're always trying to find the lowest deals if you're trying to build your PC rig, and we do it both on Twitter at robitechdeals or over on our website. And finally, check out our awesome merch over at robitechstore.com, where you can even see things like these super rad build mats that are gonna be coming here in the month of November. Anyway, guys, you can also follow us on all the socials. We're at Robitech everywhere. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.